Hello, boys and girls. I've been listening to Jethro Tull, too old to rock and roll, too young to die. Now, by the way, I know the print is black, back to front. If you know how to fix that on an iPhone, please let me know in the comments. I can't figure it out. But uh, it's a wet day here in Dublin. And uh, I don't have a car. I don't use public transport. I go everywhere on a bike. And uh, we've had a few days of really heavy rain, so I don't go out. But, uh, oh yes, and I've been playing my records, too old to rock and roll, with a, a new turntable I bought. Well, it's a new second-hand turntable. It's a Lynn LP12 from 1985, or 19, mid eighties, with one, one very, very careful owner. Now, it was expensive, but I like my records. Anyhow, oh yes, when I sat down here, I woke up, had my shower, all that sort of stuff, tidied up my flat, went across the road to uh, check out a charity shop, and uh, came back. And when I came back, I had a look at the last video I posted here. Uh, last weekend, I was in the city centre, and just by accident, I came across a transgender rally. And I was looking at the replies to this video. I always read the replies, but uh, one of them, one of them stood out. And this person, they, um, they seemed to think that the Jews were responsible for all this transgender extremism. You know. I really don't get this anti-Jewish thing. I've no idea. I've heard this all my life, but but anyhow, I've been thinking about this and that as you do, and the situation in Ireland is getting worse by the day. The woke situation, this woke fascism. And if you're not Irish, then I should explain that, you know, Ireland is pretty new to all this woke thing. Relatively speaking, maybe 15 years it's been going on. So we've started much, much later than everyone else in Europe, but we're moving 10 times faster. You know, things are moving incredibly fast here. Every day of the week, there are men dressed as, up as women going into children's libraries. All the, it's happening all over the country. It's in your face, you can't escape it. Uh, and we have, it was seen every day of the week, we've got hundreds of young men coming in, being brought in from God knows where, and being put into disused office buildings or disused community centres. And it's happening everywhere. And it's really in your face. This, <coughs> you know, any pretense, any pretense that might have existed in the past, that's gone. It's absolutely blatant now. The population of Ireland is being replaced. The LGBT people are taking over. And, uh, oh, uh, I, words can't express, express just how bad things are here. And looking at the situation objectively, you would have to say that Ireland is finished. Now, I'm not being defeatist in saying that. It's just if you're a sane, rational person, and you weren't emotionally involved in any of this. 
you would have to look at England, Ireland in particular and say they're finished. They're totally finished. It's only a matter of time before the, the ultimate collapse. And it won't be a long time. Now, the remarkable, the remarkable thing about the rise of this woke fascism that is absolutely destroying every country in Europe, the remarkable thing about this <coughs> is that there has been no resistance. If you take England, only two people have resisted this in England. One was a man who killed Joe Cox, the Member of Parliament, and the other was a man who went up and he killed someone outside a mosque. But it wasn't any old mosque. This was, I've forgotten, but this was a jihadi mosque. This was a mosque in which, you know, there have been several people killed in England by jihadis and they, most of them linked to this mosque. So, but apart from those two people, nobody in England has raised a finger to stop the destruction of their country. And the same is true in Ireland. Nobody in Ireland. Now, if you're not Irish and you're watching this from abroad, you might be watching various videos and thinking, all oh, the Irish are fighting back. No, they're not. No. Everything is going in the wrong direction here, and it's happening at an incredibly fast pace. We don't have, we have people who call themselves patriots and nationalists, but they're neither. And they call themselves men. They like using that expression, men of Ireland. But they're not men, they're not patriots. They're out and out cowards and traitors, the lot of them. You know, their political activity, some of these people, you know, they'll go out with their camera and they will harass politicians in the street and they will harass journalists. Now, I have no sympathy for politicians or journalists, but they're easy targets. You know, if you want to make a good video, you want to get lots of views, get your camera, stop a few politicians in the street, harass a few journalists, that type of thing. You, know, you, you get lots and lots of followers if you make videos like that. <coughs> but as I say, these are soft targets, really soft targets. Now in Ireland, of course, we have the greatest danger, let's say, to young people in Ireland, it's not immigration, although immigration is a real danger. The single greatest danger, of course, are the people who are pushing heroin and various other drugs on the streets of Dublin. We have a really serious drug problem in Ireland. And these people sell their drugs quite openly. Now, of course, you won't find any of our patriots going out and sticking a camera in the face of these heroin dealers. You know, because, of course, heroin dealers are not soft targets. <laughs> but, as usual, I haven't written any script, I haven't made any notes, so I'm not sure what I'm going to be saying from one minute to the next. But the point of this video really is to just make the point that I made in the past. You know, nobody in Ireland is fighting against this. There is no resistance. Nobody is doing anything. Nobody is lifting a finger. And anyone who tells you they are, they're lying. And these people who call themselves patriots and men of Ireland and all this crap, these are liars. They're parasites. I'll tell you what these people are like. You know these guys in America, they'll go out and they'll buy a, a military uniform and then they'll go online and they'll pick up a few purple hearts and a, maybe a medal of valor. And then they take on this persona as a war hero. You know, and they, they get all the benefits 
Gates and all the uh, respect. You know those sort of people, those parasites, cowards and paradise, cowards and parasites. Ooh. They project themselves as heroes at the expense of real heroes, people who died. Well, that's what Irish patriots and nationalists are like. They take this name patriot or nationalist and they attach it to themselves. But none of those people, not one single one of those people, has ever done anything patriotic or nationalist. And they have no intentions of doing anything. These people won't even say anything. You know, the patriots of old, they walked out in the public street. They got an up, up on a soapbox and they incited violence. They called on people to rise up and use physical violence against the British. That's not happening today. And you know, Ireland was ruled for whatever it was, seven, eight hundred years by the British. It was oppression, etc., etc. But it was nothing compa compared to this woke thing. This woke thing is a million times worse. <coughs> and it's not going to stop. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. And of course, not one single Irish so called patriot. Not one of those has stood up and told the powers that be to stop. You know, if somebody's causing you trouble, if somebody's seriously interfering with your life in a bad way, what do you do? Well, you tell them to stop. And you tell them in such a manner that there is an implied threat. And if you consider it necessary, you make an explicit threat. You say, don't do that again or else. Not a single, not one single Irish man or patriot is even prepared to do that. Not one. These people are cowards and they're parasites. And of course, most of them are racists. I mean, not in the modern sense, I mean in the old fashioned sense. Most of these people, they don't like black people. They don't like foreigners generally. And uh, you know, on Twitter and all that, every so often they forget themselves and they make these little comments, nasty comments. And myself now for instance, I, I have a Twitter account because I'm interested in boxing, female boxing and Twitter is the best way to get, keep in touch with what's going on there. But uh, beyond that, I'm not on Twitter. I don't engage with any of these people because they're toxic. Literally toxic. They're anti-Semites, they're racists, they're bigoted, and they're backward. And they're stupid. They're too stupid to realize that every time they post a comment, they're alienating people. Uh, they really are, they're sort of nasty people. All of these people on these alternative platforms and that, uh, you know, every so often I'll go onto Twitter or an alternative platform just to see what's going on and it's all putting, all putting. You know, it's nasty stuff. But, uh, but they're very good at these people at stopping people in the street and shoving a camera in their face. And a lot of them now, they're going into libraries, you know, where these transgender people are. They're going into libraries with their live cameras. But of course, all of these things are soft targets. And it's going to carry on anyhow. We're, we're going to have more and more and more transgender people going into libraries. We are going to have more and more, more immigration. Shoving cameras in people's faces is not going to change that. But you see, you can work with your camera and you can pretend. You can pretend you're doing something. That you're standing up for Ireland. That you're offering leadership or something. 
But, uh, well, I'm rambling on as I usually do. But I despise these people. I despise people who call themselves Irish nationalists and patriots. I absolutely despise them. All my life I've been listening to these people talking about how we fought the British. You know, we, we, the truth is these people have never fought anyone. They haven't got the moral courage to stand up and tell the woke fascists running our country to stop or else. They're doing nothing, absolutely nothing. So don't be taken in by these people. These people are cowards, but it's not just in Ireland, it's all across Europe. You know, you look at the destruction of Europe, the absolute total destruction, and nobody is fighting, fighting against it, nobody. Because, and I'll give you my own opinion in this, uh, this situation in plain English. There is no peaceful way of stopping this. None. There is no peaceful way for one simple reason. We don't live in democratic societies anymore. It is impossible in Ireland, England and most of Europe now, it is impossible to engage meaningfully in any form of political resistance with this. It's just not possible. You know, if, if, you went, if I went out tomorrow to book a hotel because I was concerned about racism and I wanted to, or immigration and I wanted to hold a meeting, no sooner would I have booked the hall than these woke fascists would be threatening the hotel owner, that sort of thing. Even a basic thing like that you can't do now. Normal political activity in, our, in Ireland now is impossible. It's absolutely impossible. And of course we have no media anymore. So all the, all the avenues of, let's say, democratic opposition, they've all been closed down. And the woke fascists who are running Ireland, and every aspect of it, you know, the political end of it, the media, academia, industry, all the cultural bodies, the sporting bodies, all of these people now are totally woke. And they are not going to stop destroying our country. That's just a simple fact. And in my opinion, the only way, the only way you could stop this now is violence. That's my personal opinion. But, uh, but that's, there's no sign that that, that that was going to happen. Now it might happen in somewhere like France. France is a very interesting case. There's no way of knowing what might happen there. You know, there might, it might end up in civil war. That seems possible in France. But Ireland or England, no. Ireland and England are both they're 90% destroyed by now. And look at it objectively, leaving your emotions aside and all of that. <coughs> Ireland is finished. Ireland is absolutely finished. And nobody, nobody has to raise a finger to do anything about it. And getting your camera and harassing migrants on the street That's not doing anything. The only thing you're doing when you do that is you alienate the very people that you want to support you. But, well again, I'm rambling. But, uh, oh, the situation is bad. It's really bad and it's getting worse. And these people call themselves men and men of Ireland. None of them are men. They're cowards, they're creeps, the lot of them. Not only that, they really are overwhelming racists, anti-Semites, 
uh, quite nasty people. But they're too stupid. They're too stupid to realise that they're, they're despised by everyone. Everyone. You know, they, they go online a lot. And of course, they get some support online. But online support means nothing. You could have, let's say here in Ireland, you could have 100,000 followers on YouTube. It means nothing. Absolutely nothing. You, know, you could have a million followers. But if you stood in the, in the next election, you'd be lucky to get 50 votes. <coughs> it doesn't mean anything. Online popularity means absolutely nothing. <coughs> and of course, all these people who support you online, 99.9% of .9 those people, they won't even turn out to a local protest on a nice sunny day. Yeah, I'm going to finish up now. I'll finish. Uh, I'll finish listening to my Jethro Tull. And uh, and I'll do whatever it is I'll do for the rest of the day. But things are bad. Things are really bad. Our country is being obliterated. The people of Ireland are going along with this. And they'll vote for more and more of this. And then you've got the patriots. The self-proclaimed patriots. Parasites. You know, they're, they're stealing that name, Patriot. They're stealing it. They have no moral right to use a name like that. I really despise these people. And none of them, none of them are going to lift a finger. None, not a single one. 